Yo, what's checking, everybody? Welcome to a breaking news edition, a commitment analysis video, if you will, of Orange Bloods Texas Football Channel. I'm Jeff Ketchum. That is Jason Sukumo, managing editor of OrangeBloods.com. And the Longhorns have picked up a big commitment. Jarrett Gibson, running back out of IMG Academy in Florida, literally in the last 20 minutes announced on Instagram Live uh, to the Texas coaches, I think, and what might have been the entire team that – uh, to nobody's surprise, he was committing to the Longhorns uh, and Jason to Shard Choice when he identifies a guy that he absolutely wants. He he's he pretty much gets his guy. He has emerged well, as multiple one of the, guys as it stands, uh, right? One, he's emerged as one of the best recruiters in the country, certainly at his position. Uh, and regardless of position as assistant coaches, he's right up there. What's the first thing that comes to your mind with regards to the commitment of, of Jarrett Gibson uh, this afternoon? Uh, I think you said it, man. Tashard Choice, absolutely amazing. 48 hours ago, almost almost exactly 48 hours ago, as I look at the clock, he gets a commitment uh, from Christian Clark. And, you know, I, I kind of wondered, Catch, when Christian Clark committed on Thursday, I'm like, Boy, I wonder if that's going to affect Jarrett Gibson at all. Um, turns out it didn't. You know, I've had my future cast in for for Jarrett Gibson to Texas since I think it was February. Um, uh, I remember late, late February, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, they came came in then. They came in again for the spring game. And I remember talking to his dad. Uh, his dad's awesome, by the way, uh, Victor. Shout out to Victor. But uh, Victor was like, he, he told me then, he goes, hey, man, I'm pretty sure he's going to commit on his official visit. So, um, true to his word, Jared Gibson announces he broadcasted it live on Instagram, which is pretty awesome. You got kind of a an inside view of you know just him committing to Steve Sarkeesian and to Shard Choice. So that was pretty cool. I put that on my Twitter feed. So go check that out, people. If you haven't seen it, it's on uh, the Orange Bloods message board too. But just a huge pickup. You know, we talked a lot, catch over the last couple months about recruiting being pretty slow for Texas. Well, we knew it was going to pick up here pretty soon. And it's starting to pick up in a big way with two big time running back commitments uh, in the last 48 hours. The most recent coming from IMG Academy and Rivals 100 member Jared Gibson. Jason, did you stick there on me? No, I'm I'm good. Can you hear me, Catch? Okay, there you are. <laughs> okay. uh, I missed that last part. Okay. No, I just said uh, just huge huge day for Tashard Choice. Uh, Texas program, two running back commitments, elite running back commitments in a 40 hour, 48 hour span. So a uh, huge pickup for Texas and, and Jarrett Gibson. Yeah, I think it's hard almost to look at the commitment of Jarrett Gibson and not combine it with the commitment of Christian Clark. You're talking about a two man backfield that has really been shaping up for a couple of months now. I mean, it, it became obvious. I don't know if it's February or March or April, like when exactly it became obvious that Clark and Gibson were the two guys that Texas wanted in this class that they've been, that Tashar choice was able to maneuver this situation into them getting both guys within essentially 50 hours. I mean, I think Christian Clark's commitment was a little bit after noon on Thursday. And here we are creeping up on two o'clock on Saturday. So obviously there are no accidents in this world. It's a really good one, two punch in this recruiting class. I, you know, I, I won't pretend that I think Jarrett Gibson is the best of the two. I think he's a really good prospect. I think he's a national top 100 prospect, uh, maybe 150. Yet when you look at the rankings, um, there's no question that the national guys across all of the services like Jarrett Gibson. Rivals has him ranked as the number 60 overall player in the country. ESPN number 29 overall nationally. On three has him at 43 overall nationally. 24-7 has him a little bit more in line where I would probably have him, which is number 87 overall nationally. In my mind, the Longhorns were able to get in this recruiting class two national top 100 level running backs. And I think the thing that, that sticks out between the two is they're not the same guy. Christian Clark isn't the same kind of running back as Jarrett Gibson. And I think it will help that fact will help both of these guys once they get on campus. I don't know that they're competing for the same role uh, in terms of hierarchy amongst Texas running backs. Well, what's incredible to me, Catch, is 
Sorry, man, I'm still doing three things at once here. But um, to get those two running backs one recruiting cycle after getting arguably the best back in the country last year in C.J. Baxter, um, I mean, to shard choice, I mean, you said it, he's one of the best in the country. I would go as far as to say not just at the running back position. I think he's legitimately making a case that he's one of the best recruiters in the country regardless of position. I mean, what they get – the guy does it's, – it's amazing. He just doesn't miss on anybody. And there are guys last year that he probably could have had, but he ends up focusing in on uh, on C.J. Baxter and, and, and closes him out pretty uh, early and gets him out of the state of Florida. So he's going back to the, the state of Florida. He's beat – he beats out – you know, Florida uh, – Gibson was one time committed to Florida. Miami was heavily involved. Uh, Georgia – I mean, Jared Gibson could have picked up the phone and committed to any school in the country. Plays at a powerhouse program at IMG Academy – He's going to come in college ready. You know, he's obviously not afraid of competition. Um, just, I mean, just a remarkable job by Tashar Choice. And, you know, I, I think you're kind of, it's almost splitting hairs between uh, the two backs, you know, between Gibson and, and Christian Clark. Um, you know, they both, they're both versatile. Uh, Gibson's more of a, a bit of a more of a power runner, I think. But Clark can run with power too. Clark's a fantastic receiver. Gibson can do a little bit, bit of that. I mean, they're two well-rounded backs. You know, and the cream will rise to the crop. But today's day and age, you know, you need two or three backs in, in today's college football world or even in the NFL. The, the days of having just one workhorse back that's going to get 25, 30 carries a game, those days are mostly gone. And these kids understand that. They're like, hey, let's keep some tread on the tires. Let me go out and get my 15 to 20 touches a game in total, runs and receptions. They're okay coming in together and, and sharing some of the spotlight. So, um, you know, Tashard Choice did a good job of selling that. To both those guys that come in and play together, you guys can be an awesome one-two punch. And like you said at the, at the outset, I mean, when Choice sets his sights on a guy or multiple guys, as it is, he doesn't really miss. It's pretty incredible. I will say the guy that is kind of stuck in my head that I think Jarrett Gibson reminds me a lot of is former Rivals four-star. They had the exact same rating, as a matter of fact, almost identical. Uh, Eno Benjamin, the running back, that came out of Wiley East back in 2017, signed with Arizona State, had a great college career, has gone on to be an NFL player, a mm-hmm. little just like Gibson, 5'10-ish, 206, 207 pounds-ish, was knocked at the time when he was in the state of Texas for not having the breakaway, you know, 10-5 speed, uh, which is one of the reasons why, I mean, he was still a national top 100 running back, but – one of the reasons why he wasn't quite rated as high as maybe he should have been was that the perception was the home run speed wasn't there. But great between the tackles, a strong runner, runs through tackles, uh, thrives between the tackles, which is kind of a lost art in the modern running back. So many guys want to pop everything to the outside, finding somebody who trusts his blocking, trusts his vision, has the ability to make guys miss in short quarters, but can do all of it in a phone booth between the tackles. That's who he reminds me of a lot. And look, if Texas gets an Eno Benjamin level player out of Jarrett Gibson uh, over the next three or four years, once he shows up on campus, (laughs) that means they've got what would probably be an all SEC level running back in time and a guy that plays on Sundays. So uh, clearly I like him a lot. I think the biggest ding on him is that he may not be as explosive as a guy like Clark. But the totality of what he brings to the table at the position, he's a damn good running back with a lot of skill sets uh, that you you know he, he he checks a lot of boxes on the running back scouting box, uh, and it's easy to see why teams across the country were so high on him. Yeah, there's not really a weakness to his game. I mean, you mentioned it. Is he? whatever Alvin Kamara knows you Reggie Bush no but I mean he, he put on the film and I get it. it's IMG Academy he's got great players around him but you see him popping off some pretty long runs and nobody's catching him from behind I mean you know the, so the same knock that people had on the NFL's all-time leading rusher he didn't have great breakaway speed well he was fast enough to get the job done Emmett Smith was so uh you know Gibson there's no real weakness to his game I mean you mentioned he's a between the tackles runner he can get outside when he needs to but he is a an exceptional between the tackles runner that's the kind of guy to shard choice. These college coaches really seem to uh, favor, or those guys just appeal to them. Guys, I mean, they want the guys that can kind of get those tough, you know, three, four yards between the tackles when maybe there's not a lot of 
not a lot of daylight there. Uh, Jared Gibson certainly fits that bill. Like I say, he's playing at a one of the highest levels you can play at at IMG Academy. He's getting tested every day in practice. Um, I mean, that guy will come in college ready. And, you know, I'll just say the, the other backs on campus, I know C.J. Baxter's great and Jaden Blue and Jonathan Brooks if he sticks around. But uh, be ready, man, because these young pups are coming and, and, and Choice has got – he's got some good ones coming in. It's, it's pretty incredible. I think one of the, the fascinating elements of this two-man class coming in, Jason, is that Texas has five sophomore slash freshman running backs on its roster right now. When you think about C.J. Baxter – um, oh God, I'm trying to, uh, Jonathan Brooks, uh, Jaden Blue, Jaden Blue, uh, uh we're, trying, we're talking young running backs. Yes. I'm no. sorry. I just blanked out on you. No, you're fine. Um, those are the main ones. They've on the got top. five guys, even if at this exact moment, and I'm including Jonathan Brooks in that group as well. I mean, you know, I think people yeah, really have should, uh, lost sight that he's, he's not even an upperclassman technically yet. No, but I mean, this could, you know, depending on how the season goes, this could be his last season at Texas. You know, Trey Wisner is coming in. He's a young, talented back. I, Savion I mean, Red was the guy along with Red, Wisner. So um, the yeah. five sophomore and freshman running backs are Blue, Brooks, Red, Wisner, and Baxter. So you've got five fairly young guys already on campus. You've got two more guys coming on campus that you know this coaching staff is want to see – them get on the field as fast as possible. So it'll be interesting. It was already going to be interesting to see how the running backs kind of where the hierarchy amongst them mm -hmm. settles, both at the beginning of the season, middle of the season, end of the season. You'll almost certainly see something give at that point because you probably can't get by with five guys all wanting the ball. But then I think that really comes to a head when these other two young guys come in. The one thing you wouldn't say about the running back position at this point is that it's needy from a scholarship standpoint. They've got their guys. And other than Keelan Robinson, who is a senior this year, they don't, they're not scheduled to lose a running back for the next two years. So they got a bunch of guys. They're all really talented. And it really does kind of remain to be seen how – We've all got our opinions on yeah. who we think is going to start and how it's all going to unfold. But it is one of the interesting subplots to this Texas season moving forward is the running back room kind of just solving the questions. And then what happens when these two guys come in? It's a great problem to have if you're Texas. You've just got so many damn talented running backs that you can't keep track of them all. Yeah, it's a good problem to have. And, you know, if we're being – Brutally honest, probably one or two of those guys are going to filter out somewhere and maybe wind up somewhere else. I don't want to speculate on who that might be because, as you said, we don't even know how the, the pecking order is going to be this year, much less <laughs> next year when, when these two uh, you know incoming freshmen get on campus. But there's only so many mouths or so, so many balls to go around. You know, you got to try to feed all these mouths. So, you know, we'll see. Jonathan Brooks maybe has a fantastic year. He goes to the NFL. There's That opens up a, a spot there. You know, what happens to some of these other guys who are on campus – you know, some of them portal out, you know, we'll, we'll see. But it, you said it perfectly. It's a great problem to have. And, you know, what competition is going to make them all better. And, you know, that's you, you want players like that. I love a guy like Jarrett Gibson that's, you know, that wants to come in. He knows what's in front of him. You know, he knows Christian Clark just committed. He knows C.J. Baxter out of Florida is on the roster. He doesn't care. He wants to come in and he's confident he can compete. I love those types of guys. I mean, that's what you have to have to go play at the Alabamas and Georgias and Ohio States of the world. The best of the best, they don't worry about that kind of stuff. And Jared Gibson, I promise you, is not worried about that stuff. He's fully confident that he'll come in, uh, make his mark some way, somehow. Yeah, he did not roll out of bed today and go, wait a minute, yeah. Texas has how many running backs? <laughs> you know, like they all know it, and that hasn't kept Texas from being on the forefront of their recruitments, certainly for Gibson. I mean, Clark's recruitment slightly different in the way that it unfolded. But like you said, you and I had Texas – I think you were first, but I think we both had them in February. If yeah, I'm not listen, mistaken. Late February, yeah. That's a, it, for a, that to hold for four months exactly the way that we thought it would, uh, again, speaks to what Tashar Choice uh, is doing as a recruiter and what he's done in this recruitment. Let's deviate a little bit. We are in day two of this big official visit weekend. There's 
lots of buzz. Social media has been fun to keep up with. Any vibe on like what happens next? What are you anticipating over the next, you know, 24 hours, let's say up until about two o'clock on Sunday? Well, as you were speaking literally just now, Trey Owens, the Texas quarterback commitment, just tweeted, we're not done. So <laughs> buckle up. Um, what am I anticipating? <laughs> uh, I'm anticipating that I've got more writing to do this afternoon. I've got a couple other commitment stories I need to, uh, to get written and ready. Um, you know, when might these guys publicly announce? You know, we're still waiting on some guys from last weekend to publicly announce, but uh, I think it's going to be an active weekend. I think it's going to be an incredibly productive weekend. You mentioned Colin. I think we mentioned Colin Simmons being on in town. Uh, you know, Terry Bussey, Kobe Black uh, is in town. We're keeping an eye, a close eye on Kobe Black. Um, you know, we can go down the list. I think we already previewed it earlier in the week, but there's a ton of guys on campus. I think Texas is going to make waves with the overwhelming majority of them. And I think it's going to be an ultra productive uh, weekend for Texas. As it relates to Colin Simmons, we'd be like begrudging everybody if we didn't specifically talk about the number one player prospect in town this weekend for the Longhorns. Such an important target. So far, you know, I mean, all these kids go on their visits and you'd think on social media they're having the absolute time of their lives. But the the other flip side of the coin would be well they're just not putting anything on social media yeah. and, hey, when he throws up at midnight the you know the hook on the emoji or something like that that's only that can't be I mean, it's a small sign right but it's a good sign so i mean you'd rather have someone being vocal about the visit on social media the way colin simmons is being than rather just you know being a ghost and non-existent so you know based well, on his social media uh activity yeah it looks like it's going exceptionally well you know well, i don't try to i don't like to bug those guys on their visits uh, but certainly that'll be a big priority on Sunday, trying to track down, you know, by any means necessary, uh, some kind of updates on how the visit goes for Colin Simmons. I think the thing that constantly reinforced coming into this visit and that Texas was already in fantastic shape with uh, Colin Simmons, this isn't a situation like some other guys in this recruiting class that Texas will continue to, to go after and, and, and covet where maybe they're third or they're fourth and there's like a, a hot, think of a guy like Justin Williams, right? I mean, you'd love to get that guy, but you've got to climb over Georgia and Oregon to kind of get into one of those top two spots. That's not the case with Simmons. Texas has felt like oh, in the one-two spot along with LSU for almost all of this year. And despite him taking a bazillion trips, he's gone out and seen just about everybody that can be seen Coming into this weekend, it still felt like a 50-50 type deal, which is a great play. to be. If you're, I think this Texas coaching staff feels like if it's even coming into a visit, we're leaving. Mm. Now, hey, Colin Simmons may wait until signing day or later in the year to make a decision. Of all of the guys we're expecting to potentially make a commitment in the next 24, 48 hours, he's not on that list, but – if Texas is able to emerge with some real momentum this weekend, and there's no reason to think that they won't, it would put them in about as good a position non-commitment wise as they could possibly be with the number one target on their board. Yeah. And if I'm being completely honest, catch, I mean, even if Colin Simmons shocked us and committed tomorrow, and, and as silly as that sounds, it's not out of the question. Colin is anything goes with Colin Simmons. Okay. But I'm not expecting that to be clear. I am not expecting that or predicting that, but if he did, or if he committed to LSU, that, that recruitment's not going to be over until he signs in December. So it'd be an, an, an enormous moment for Texas. Even if he comes out of the weekend saying, Hey, Texas is his number one school. Yes. That's going to be an enormous moment for Texas, but they're going to be twists and turns. You know, LSU you still got an LSU official visit in the fall. He's going to take some other visits, I'm sure, in the fall. Um, you know, you want to put yourself in a good position if you're Texas, obviously. You'd rather be playing from uh, in, in front than playing from behind. But even if he committed tomorrow, which I don't expect again, but even if he committed to Texas, you're still going to have to fight like hell to hang on to that commitment. If, you know, if, if Texas comes out of the weekend as a leader, as I'm kind of anticipating, Texas is still going to have to fight like hell to maintain that lead position. So long way to go with Colin Simmons, but like you – I do like Texas's position, but hey, man, recruiting moment, momentum in recruiting is a fickle thing. And he goes to visit LSU in the fall and gets blown away there. 
that pendulum can swing back and forth. It so, still does feel like an LSU Texas showdown, though. I mean, I, I have felt that way for. I'm try, I'd have to go back and look at my notes, but the first time I talked to Colin Simmons, I mean, it's probably close to a year or better. I mean, I've always felt it was LSU and then maybe Texas right below, Georgia kind of hovering around there. But now I'm thinking it's Texas LSU dead even coming out of this weekend. I think Texas will probably be the team to beat. But I've felt that way for a long time. Just talking to him and people close to him, there's just a different, different vibe in the way they talked about LSU and Texas. So, yeah, I've always felt it's going to come down to those two in the end. Simmons, maybe more than any other recruit, has been pretty open during during interviews to kind of sell home the what it means to stay at Texas, to be a college. You know that that was a thing from like twenty years ago. Don't leave the state, stay here, have state pride. Colin Simmons has been pretty open about, hey, like why not stay home and play mm. college football? And if I do, there's no better place than the University of Texas. He's been more rah-rah about the idea of staying in state and there, there being this idea of loyalty to staying home close to the state programs more than other guys in really the cycle. Close to, he's really close to his mom and his younger brother too. So not like LSU is that far away from Duncanville. And, um, but you know, I just don't foresee him going too far away from home. You know? And he's a guy that loves his family, his relationship with his brother. I think he was at SMU in the last week. Mm -hmm. And they did a great job of winning over the brother. And I, I remember seeing a post on social media like, why not go to the school where they have my brother's heart? So more than anything, I, I don't think he's going to SMU, but I think it family's a big deal. And I think staying close to home and Texas and LSU aren't that far apart in terms of, you know, it's not like one's all the way across the country. But Texas is still a little bit closer to home. You can certainly get back and forth between Tech, Duncanville and Austin a lot easier than you can going all the way out to Baton Rouge. And sometimes it's the slim margins that end up making the biggest difference. Um, yeah, but I, not that I needed talking into Texas maybe now being the 1A and LSU being the 1B. But if we get through this visit and that's not the case, then you almost certainly aren't going to get the kid. So I think given that – where he is on his visit lists and given where Texas and LSU are, it will be incredibly disappointing if after this weekend, Texas isn't the betting favorite a little bit like Micah Hudson has Texas tech as a betting favorite They're betting favorites. Right. And then the goal will be holding on to that momentum between the rest of the summer. And then obviously all the way into December. Yeah, that's key. Like I said, there'll be some twists and turns, and I'm expecting the same with Micah Hudson. I, hey, I'm expecting Micah Hudson. I don't think his recruitment goes on much longer. I'm not sure it makes it out of the weekend, but, again, if he commits to Texas Tech on Sunday, um, that one, I don't think that one's over. If Texas keeps, you know, plugging away there, they'll, they'll get him on campus at some point, and same with Colin Simmons. Those are recruitments that are going to go all the way until signing day. Jason, any final parting shots? Um, I don't have a parting shot, but I thought I saw a super chat question. Uh, I think we got the super chat question. Yeah, you two are pretty oh, no, busty as a wide receiver. What's a good wide receiver player comparison? Yeah, I'm terrible at these player comparisons, but um, one that just popped into my head when I read the, the question is he's got a little bit of Jordan Whittington to him. He's kind of similar body frame, um, can do a lot of different things. You know, obviously Whittington played – some running back, he played some safety, he was recruited as a safety initially, now plays slot receiver. I, I see some of that in Terry Bussey. I almost think Bussey may be a tad bit more explosive in terms of athletic athleticism, uh, but that would be a kind of a similar comparison for me. I've been working on that one too. I don't have a good one. I don't know he's that he, I buy the He's not as big as Jordan Whitting. He's not as big and as powerful, but, uh, yeah, you're right. And he's probably a little more twitchy. Than, than Whittington is. But, but uh, he's a guy that can do it all. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what, I'll have that answer all ready to go in the event that he commits to Texas. Which, <laughs> talk, of all the prospects on camp, he's the guy that Texas has the most work, I think, to do with. Yeah. I was on his Instagram page yesterday looking for those arrival photos. Mm -hmm. And in the 24 hours before he visited Texas, he created about – 20 different AM posts <laughs> that ranged from AM is the greatest place on earth to 
anything in between. And then you saw him kind of checking into his hotel. It was almost like he was letting A&M people know, hey, I'm going into the lion's den, but I haven't completely forgot about you. It'll be interesting to see what 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 where his mindset is coming out of this weekend. Uh, the Longhorns have a lot of work to do, but you don't doubt this staff once they get a kid in for 48 hours on these official visits. They've just been so good over the last couple of years of turning things around or moving mo- momentum into their direction. There's a lot of bussy that they need to sell and and and, and kind of get right. Which position does, or do they definitely want him to play at? Um, where does he fit in given those positions? There's a lot of things that he wants to hear. And look, they've got to knock that AM thing off of him. Uh, but making it murky in his recruitment coming out of this weekend is probably the goal if you're Texas. Make him hold off on any pending decisions and let's see if they can get him on campus again, maybe later this summer, get him on campus for a, a, ro- a home game. And, and then suddenly, you know it's a little bit more of a hand-to-hand street fight as opposed to coming into this weekend, it's like a gun-to-hand combat and um, with a big lead. But if they can knock that down a little bit, I think uh, all bets are off at that point. All right, we got to get back to work because there could be a commitment like at any moment. Guys, smash that thumbs up button. If you're excited about Jarrett Gibson coming to the University of Texas, show us by hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing to the channel. You can get the instant analysis right now by scanning that code that Blake has just put up. Nothing makes me feel older and less out of touch than trying to explain like what to do with these scans. It's a QR code catch. Even I know that. Come on, man. Yeah. It, check out the <laughs> QR code. Um, <laughs> I'm going to I was about to ask myself a, a question out loud that would make me feel even more stupid. Not going to do it people. Uh, Look, we'll be back if there's more breaking news throughout the weekend. Otherwise, you'll see us on Monday for the Monday Overreaction show. But don't be surprised if this isn't the last instant analysis video on the recruiting side of things that we do this weekend. So stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel. Get those notifications. Uh, And until next time, you be good. Have fun on Orange Blood surfing uh, the site, waiting for the next piece of big news. The guys are at Top Golf right now. So, I hope we can just let them have some fun for a while, but thanks to uh, Jared Gibson for making this Saturday a little more enjoyable than it otherwise would have been. Take care guys. We'll see you soon.